In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of 2 John. And I think the reason that this one really came to mind is because of what we were just talking about. The truth does matter. And when we intentionally deceive other people for our own gain, that's something that God does not look fondly upon. And the reason is because it's such a contrast to the kind of person that he wants in his kingdom. And a great proof of that comes from the book of 2 John, chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. The elder to the chosen lady and her children, whom I love in truth, and not only I, but also all who know the truth, for the sake of the truth which abides in us and will be with us forever, grace, mercy, and peace will be with us. From God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and love. Now this is John kind of getting ready for his sign-off here. And he's sort of giving some parting thoughts. So he's talking specifically to a, a specific few Christians. And you notice what he says in there. He talks about the truth abiding in us. What does it mean for the truth to abide in us? What would that look like to an outside observer? And how can we know if we ourselves are the kind of people that have the truth abiding in us? Well, we know that Christ dwells in us. That's found in Ephesians 3.17. So we understand that Christ is something that dwells in those that are following him. And Christ is God, of course, and God is truth. So in that sense, we could just say that, oh, what, what John's talking about here is that because Christ dwells inside of us, as Paul tells us in Ephesians, that the truth, because A equals A, is also abiding in us. Well, I don't think that's an incorrect way to look at it, but I think that we can flesh that idea out a little bit more. I don't think that John is merely saying that Christ dwells in us, because if that's what he wanted to say, he would have come out and say it. So, I mean, come on, the, the Apostle John's a very plain-spoken person anyway. He's very direct. And I think in this particular passage where he is speaking to us, and inspiration is, is taking a part of this, that that line is not accidental. That when he says truth abides in us, he wanted to instill in them the idea that being truthful is dwelling inside of us. And when something dwells inside of you, you can tell. It, it sort of protrudes outward. Just like we're supposed to emulate Christ, just like we're supposed to put on Christ, and other people are supposed to look at us and see a little bit of Christ living in us, people are also supposed to look at us and see that we are a person in whom the truth dwells, which means we're to be trustworthy, we're to be honest both in word and deed, and so we need to make it intentional that we are truthful with others. And I think that I'd, that includes, of course, a couple of things. First of all, obvious, but don't lie to other people. I think it extends further than that, though. Don't lie to God and don't lie to yourself. I can't tell you the number of times I have fallen into temptation and sin because I lied to myself. I told myself, okay, this wasn't that bad, or okay, I can handle this, or all right, I'll just kind of get close to sin, but not actually, you know, technically sin, and so I'll just get real close to it, but not actually go over that threshold. I knew it was wrong. I knew I shouldn't have done it. I lied to myself to allow myself to do that. And isn't that true of an awful lot of people in the Scripture? David lied to himself, telling himself, Oh, I can handle looking at this naked woman on the rooftop. Nothing bad's going to happen. I mean, it happened to Judas. He lied to himself about whether or not he could be loyal to Christ. It happened to Jonah. Jonah saying, Oh, I can escape God. He won't know where I'm going. Yeah, how'd that work out for you? 
So the Bible is filled with stories of people who lied to themselves and got themselves in trouble. And so it's almost like a gateway sin, you know, like a gateway drug. People that the, tr the truth was not dwelling inside of them, and it did not guide their actions and guide their decisions, they were able to deceive themselves into getting themselves into trouble. And it's unfortunate, but th that's the situation that we often find ourselves in, too. And so I think the first step of the truth abiding in us is that we have to be honest with ourselves. We have to be honest about our own limitations. We have to be honest about the things that we can and can't do. We have to be honest about the things that we're good at. Because that's going to help us learn how we're going to do good for the kingdom. And so this whole idea of living the Christian life, I think in a lot of ways starts with this idea of the truth abiding in us. And what does he say afterward? He says that if you have truth abiding in you, then you have grace, mercy, and peace. But these things only happen if we start with truth. First of all, grace. Well, you can't extend grace to somebody that is dishonest or unrepentant. I mean, you can give them more and more chances, but if they're continuing to lie to themselves, if they are continuing to live out that sinful lifestyle and they have not repented and don't realize that what they're doing is wrong, in other words, they're lying to themselves saying that I'm okay, well then God's not going to extend grace to those people because they have not come before his throne and asked for forgiveness. So that's the first one. You can't have that without the truth abiding in you. And then there's mercy. To have it, you have to own your sins before you realize that you even need mercy. You're not going to ask for mercy if you think that you're okay. If you think what you're doing is not sinful, if you have lied to yourself about whether or not what you're doing is right, then you're not going to come before God and say, please forgive me because you don't think there's anything to be forgiven. You're not going to be the recipient of God's mercy. You'll notice that in the parables of the Gospels, Whenever somebody does come to the master in whatever parable that Christ is telling, they have to want mercy. They have to realize that they are in need of mercy before it is granted to them. And so someone that's still in that fog, that haze of sin, and doesn't really understand where they are, they don't have the truth abiding in them, they can't have mercy either. And then finally, there's peace. Now this one ought to be pretty obvious, especially for anybody that's ever gotten caught up in a lie. There is nothing more stressful, nothing that creates unrest more in a person than living out a lie. Whether it's trying to juggle a web of lies that you've told other people and trying not to get caught, or it's just living in a way that is not in concert with God's will for you, living in open rebellion against God, believing that the way that you're living is okay. That's not a peaceful lifestyle. You're going to be fraught with unrest. If you want that peace that passes all understanding, if you want the kind of peace that God can grant both on this side of eternity and the next, it has to start with truth. You have to acknowledge, He is God, I am me, He knows better than I do, and I need to submit my will. You'll notice that when you look at the people that were saved, the people that came to Christ, what did they do first? It all started with, Believing. Believing in the truth. Because that's how faith starts. It can't go anywhere without that. And so all the amazing things that God offers us, all the amazing things that we have through the death of Jesus Christ, all of it has to start with truth. Stay the course, friends. <laughs> Now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.